Oh wait. What? Never mind. Yeah, how do I change my name? She undid it. She undid it. Oh, is that oh, what you're okay. But do you guys want to change your name to be Tracy's Dancer and Tim Sex? Yeah. Wait, so now you're the host again, Jenna? No Chaz is. Yeah, I'm sorry. My computer just shut off. There is a problem. I'm terribly sorry, but um I can there's there's some people in the waiting room. So is everybody can we start? We can start. Look at us. We're like a huge crowd here. We're almost the Brady Bunch here. Just the admission team. One big happy family. Look, Apollo even wants to come to Riverdale. Yeah. The dog. Okay, everybody's in. Okay, um, we started a little bit late. That is my fault, but that's okay. So hi, everybody. My name is Chaz. I'm a student at Riverdale Country School, uh, a rising 11th grader. Um, and this is the Riverdale Country School School Fair. So I am going to stop talking now and hand it to the Riverdale team, so. Thank you, Chaz. If we miss anything, you jump back in. 100%. <laughs> All right. Um, hi, everyone. It's great to be with you this afternoon. Um, my name is Jenna King. I'm the Director of Admission and Enrollment at Riverdale. And uh, the reason you see so many cameras turned on uh, today is that we do have a, a big team um, and everybody's eager to uh, share experiences with you this afternoon. Um, so we'll introduce ourselves really quickly. Maybe before um, the introductions, I'll just give a very tiny, quick overview. Um, so we are a pre-K through 12th grade school of about 1,200 students located in the um, Riverdale section of the Bronx. We're on two campuses. Um, our lower school has um, a nice eight acres right next to the river here um, in Riverdale. And then our uh, middle and upper school have another 19 and a half acres um, just on the other side of the Henry Hudson Parkway. We're close by to Fieldston and Horace Mann who are a couple of other schools um, located in this uh, Hill School area. Um, I'm gonna have the rest of the team introduce themselves, then I'll give a little bit more of an overview. Um, and we're joined today by one of our uh, current parents um, who's also gonna introduce himself as well. So, um, but maybe we'll have uh, Tim Sachs. Why don't you give it a, a go? Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Tim Sachs. I'm the uh, Director of Lower School Admission. And I'll... <laughs> Hi, I'm Tracy Dansker. Um, I'm the Director of Middle and Upper School Admission. We happen to be married and also on childcare duty today. So we're going to pop back and forth, but we're both really glad you're here. Um, and we're really excited to share everything Riverdale with you. All right, excellent. Maybe uh, Izzy, do you want to go next? Yeah, hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm so happy that you took some time on this beautiful Sunday to talk with us for a little bit. Um, and looking forward to hearing your answer, your questions. Excellent, and Andy? Hi, everybody, good afternoon. Um, I'm Andy Jensen, I'm a middle and upper school admission officer at Riverdale. Um, this is my third year working in the office and we're very excited to have you all here today. Great, and Katie? There you go. Hi everyone. It's really great to you know see all these names and and have you here with us today. I'm uh, my name is Katie Grobeck. I'm the middle and upper school admission coordinator, um, and really looking forward to the next time with you. Great. And JP. Hi everyone. Uh, my name's uh, JP Jacquet, and I am a parent of a current kindergartner, soon to be first grader at Riverdale, and also the one of the class parents for her grade. Awesome. So now you know the crew. Um, so we'll just do, um, I think, a, a quick overview about the school and uh, maybe each share something that resonates with us about, about the school. What do we like about it? What, um, what's our favorite thing about the experience? And then really we want to open it up to your questions. Um, so we hope this will be somewhat informative. So just to give you um, a little bit more information on sort of the, the demographics of the school. I mentioned we have about 1,200 students here. Oh, I should also say, I'm, I forgot to mention this, I'm also the parent of three Riverdale students. Um, I have a fourth grade daughter who's been here since pre-K and um, two uh, boys in second grade who have also been here since pre-K. So I don't wanna forget that important detail. Um, so 1,200 students, what that looks like here at school is that in our pre-K we have one section of 16 students uh, we then expand uh, for kindergarten through fifth grade to um, a grade size of about 60 students divided among three classes of about 20 um, and all of our 
uh, classes at the lower school have two teachers in them. So we have a, an assistant teacher, head teacher model in the earlier years, and then two co-head teachers um, in the upper level grades at the lower school. We then do, as we shift from the lower school campus um, to our middle school campus, we add about 20 to 25 new students in sixth grade. Um, we do expand a little bit for seventh and eighth. And then in the high school years, we expand again. Um, so we get to about 130 students students per grade. Um, I love the fact that we're constantly increasing the size of the grade. I think it allows us to um, consider kids um, in, in all different grade levels, and um, I think it allows us to expand our community. It keeps things fresh uh, for both our teachers and for our students and families, so I love that. Um, in terms of some other specific numbers, um, our average class size at the lower school, as I said, is about 20. At the middle and upper school, it's about 16 students, but our student to teacher ratio is about five to one. And the reason for that discrepancy is that we have a lot of additional people on campus ensuring that kids have a positive experience. And a couple of the um, highlights for me about our program are that I think we do a really good job of balancing that sort of uh, collective experience and the community experience with the individual focus. Um, I think we also really get to know kids well, um, and I promise you that they leave our school feeling known, heard, and um, we work really hard to ensure that everybody develops a sense of belonging too. Our kids um, are diverse in lots of different ways. About 40% of our students identify as students of color. Um, we have about 20% of our students receiving some level of financial aid, and we're fortunate to have a $10 million financial aid budget. Uh, we represent 104 zip codes in our community, uh, so students are coming to us from a wide geographic range. And we also wanna make sure that um, our students represent different interests, backgrounds, family structures, all of that's important to us. Um, I'll just say really quickly before I turn it over to everybody else, uh, when we talk about Riverdale, we think about mind, character, and community. Um, and what we mean by that, um, we want our students to leave the school um, knowing how to think, knowing how to learn, knowing how to ask good questions, knowing how to um, work collaboratively with their peers. Um, we're not necessarily just about filling kids with knowledge. We're also about helping them to use their knowledge um, and understand how they can function in the world um, as they join uh, diverse and um I guess I'll just say diverse teams. Um, we also talk at Riverdale a lot about character, um, and that does include being nice and treating others with respect and kindness and open-mindedness and uh, just you know watching the news over the past, I don't know, week, but also months, uh, you can see that that's something that we really need to teach our students and our children. Um, and so that's important to us, but I think we also take it one step further. We also really want kids to develop other character strengths um, such as resilience and teamwork and grit and those are things that we want them to really understand about themselves. Lastly, community is a huge part of who we are. Um, we we um, believe that every student at, at school should have a sense of belonging in the community um, and we want them to walk away from our school recognizing that they're, they're um, they're part of something bigger than themselves. Um, and we want them to go out in the world when they leave Riverdale and take what they've learned and what they've experienced at school um, and make a change in the world for the better. So that's a tiny bit about our mission and our vision. Um, I'm gonna turn it over to, um, maybe Tim will go next and um, we can you can talk a little bit about some of the highlights of the lower school maybe, Tim, and then we'll have JP jump in as a, a lower school parent and maybe share a little bit about your experience and what's gone well for you um, in your first year as a Riverdale parent this year. So go ahead, Tim. Sure, thanks, Shannon. So, I'm, I, you know, I'll give you, I, I guess I'll sort of tie things together. I'll give you kind of my favorite, my favorite thing about our approach to learning at the lower school, and hopefully that will, uh, will, will be a good kind of gateway into some of the other things that you'll learn about school later on through your, throughout the process. Um, for me, I, I mean, I really think we have a, a very um, research-driven approach to learning, and, and so, uh, you know, there's, there's a, I don't know, a certain humility around on what children know and, and, and what they get to know as they grow up at Riverdale. Um, and so we know that we have to tailor experiences that are gonna be meaningful and powerful and uh, connect with students, bring uh, to school every day. So what a typical student will go through day to day, week to week, year to year, um, is going to be a variety of different experiences that tap into interests that 
um, challenge them in areas that are maybe unfamiliar or uh, areas of growth. And so there may be some, um, some learning that looks like the learning you might remember as a child. There may be some learning that um, looks a bit different. It may be on campus, off campus, around our campus, which we think is a huge, um, a huge gift for students. Uh, but at the end of the day, students come home and I think the, fe the, the feeling that they have is um, that they had a, a good time. They had fun. They were celebrated for their strengths. They were um, challenged in, in certain ways that, that were maybe uncomfortable, but never, um, ne never so uncomfortable that it wasn't enjoyable. And, and I think that uh, generally they, they bring themselves to school every day. And so that, that connection between um, who a person is, who a child is, and the, the content that they're learning every day is something we take very seriously. Um, I found that to be something that can continue to grow. And, and uh, uh, as an institution, I think we work on it year to year. And um, I'll just say quickly, my, on a personal level, my favorite thing about the community um, is, is the humility that everybody has. And I think that, that that's not only for teachers and administrators and, and staff and folks on campus who are taking care of children um, and, and shepherding their learning, but, um, but, but just generally also for the parent body. There's a certain um, acknowledgement when parents join us that this is not a, a straight line and that you know, we're partnering with you uh, to, to help watch these children grow up and um, develop them as students and as people. And, um, and you have to be humble in doing that. There's no, um, there's no one size fits all. And uh, it's been really enjoyable for me personally. I was a student at Riverdale long, long ago, and then I was a, a teacher in kindergarten and pre-K. And so um, I've grown up there in many ways uh, myself. And so um, it's a place that it embraces learning for, for the entire community. And again, I, I think having a kind of humble mindset around learning is, is very beneficial for a student. So I, I hope that makes sense. I look forward to, um, you know, having you visit us, learn more about us, and, and get to know some of the details of our program more. Um, and it's exciting to chat about, about the lower school in particular. Um, so I hope you enjoy getting to know us. Yeah, and I'm just gonna jump in and, um, you know, as a current parent of a kindergartner, um, I still remember actually what the moment uh, where I was just like pretty convinced and really excited about it being the right fit for my daughter. Um, and uh, we were actually on a tour and, uh, you know, Jenna mentioned that there's the ratio is really, you know, is like five to one in terms of teachers to students and uh, uh, students to teachers, sorry. Um, and so uh, I remember that we talked to one of the theater um, teachers and it was like a full-time person. And that person talked about in the lower school, what they do is when, instead of like, say, rep, you know, um, creating a play of somebody else's work, they actually create these plays based on like the kids who are in the section. So, you know, my daughter would be in a, you know, in one of those three sections of around 20 students. And so if say you're at a home where like there's, you know, like two dads at home, then like that gets woven into the story potentially. Or if you have like siblings or you have, you're living with grandparents or you're from, you know, I myself was born in Haiti, that gets woven in. And so I really appreciate it as an educator myself, um, seeing how they kind of would weave in both into the curriculum, um, this community piece and like how students live together. And I can say um, thus far, my, uh, my daughter's having a phenomenal time. Um, at best, I'm a part-time chauffeur um, as I'm picking up or dropping her off and she's making lots of friends both in her grades and outside of the grades and is really supported by a lot of adults who care about her. Great, maybe uh, Izzy, do you want to jump in? Yeah, for sure. So one of my favorite things um, about Riverdale and that I get to see sort of every day is the amount of support that our students have. It's something that I really value, um, although my parents don't bother. But as a parent, when you send your child to school, you hope um, that they are being taken care of and loved as if you were there. And as, you know, as, and I truly see that every day at Riverdale. Um, one of the ways in which I see that is through our dean program and our advisory program as well. So their deans are really a huge lifeline for the students. They are the main point of contact for the parents as well. They are the person that is an advocate for your child, um, is a cheerleader for your child when they do well on an exam, or maybe if the, you know, if the child has a question about how do I go meet with my teacher, you talk to your dean, they really sort of um, make sure that, that you are connected with all the other people on campus and different ways for you to grow and your experience um, at Riverdale to be a little bit better. Um, so deans are really, you know, they're like the mom and dads of, of your kids on campus. So that's really nice to see and heartwarming as well. Um, yeah, so that's one of my favorite things. Uh, Tracy? Hi, everyone. Um, I think that one of the things that I really love about the school is, um, you know, I, I heard Jenna talking a little bit from the side over there about the size of the school. And I think one of the things that I really love regarding the size, which is sort of a silly thing to love, is that 
it creates a plethora of opportunity for students. And no matter what grade level you're considering entering at, whether that's kindergarten, sixth grade, ninth grade, third grade, you want to know that your child's going to be in a place where they can grow and change and take advantage of different opportunities and that you're not necessarily picking something that, um, you know, that might not be the best fit for them later on. Um, so often, you know, if you are like, oh, you know, my child is really into science and soccer right now and they're applying to sixth grade, that's fantastic. But maybe by the time they're in 10th grade, they're really going to be interested in Shakespeare and dance. And I think Riverdale has so many opportunities connected to its size. There are so many students, we can offer a variety of different opportunities. Not just the number of things that we offer, though. Um, I think one of the things I really love about it is that we don't expect students to be just sort of one person focused on one thing and we really allow them to explore multiple opportunities and take on multiple identities in the community. And while of course we'd love to be together having a conversation with you in person and showing you around and um, you know, one of the visuals I can leave you with that kind of represents this for me is that every year we have a very, very big homecoming celebration in the fall. And one of my favorite things about homecoming is that when you go down to the football game, when the, um, the acapella group comes out to sing before the game, almost all the kids are in uniform. And that's because they were probably playing either tennis or soccer or football or some other fall sport, but they're also singers and they're in the singing group. Um, and that's just one example. You know, when I look at the kids in that group, um, they've also been, you know, really active in our science research program over, we have a summer science research program, or maybe they're a leader of one of our affinity groups or some other thing as well. Um, but I think that that's something that I am always impressed with and something I think we work really hard to encourage in our student body. And I think our size lends itself to being a place that we really can and give that many opportunities to kids. Cool. Katie, you want to jump in? Sure. Just making sure I unmute myself this time. Um, I think one of my favorite things about Riverdale, and I'll, I actually didn't say this earlier, was um, this is my first year working at the school, and uh, something that really impressed me from the start was seeing um, all of the relationships that are formed between the students and each other and between the students and their uh, teachers and like the faculty and how they, you know, work, you know, the faculty open up a lot of times to work with the students if, you know, you're in middle school or upper school and there's something that you don't understand in your class. Uh, they will make sure that they put aside some time, whether it's during lunch or during a free period or before or after school, to really work with the students to not only help them understand a topic in a class, but also just to get, the, get to know them a little better. Um, something else that I was able to do a little bit before um, we kind of closed down the campus was I was helping uh, as an assistant coach for one of the middle school teams and I was able to hear the players on the team talk about uh, how much they enjoyed certain classes that they had and a lot of the common reasons why they enjoyed those classes was because of the relationships that they had formed with their teachers. Um, and so that's something that was important to me when I was a student. And so it's really nice to see that that is definitely a thing that is um, available at Riverdale. So Great. Andy? Yeah, so um, I think one of the most important things about Riverdale um, is the way diversity, equity, inclusion, and really belonging kind of manifest on our campus. Um, you know, Jenna mentioned that we have 40% of students um, who identify as students of color. Um, we allocate around $10 million to financial aid each year, um, which evens out to about 20% of our families receiving some sort of financial aid. We represent over 100 different zip codes. And of course, numbers are kind of important to get a sense of things. But what I really love about Riverdale is that our community um, works really hard to look beyond the basic numbers and statistics to strive not just for diversity on a surface level, but really go deeper to be equitable, inclusive, and a place where our students um, really belong. Um, our community engagement team has worked really hard um, in the past couple years to, especially this year, bring that belonging piece because um, we can have, you know, the numbers of students, but we want them to feel like our campus is a place that's kind of a second home to them. Um, and one of the my favorite things that's come out of this is really our student led initiatives. Um, so our students are really taught and encouraged to use their voices and speak up for themselves. Um, and so with support from our community engagement team, students have created and led month long celebrations like our Latinx Heritage Month that happens in September, October time. Um, we have a Black History Month, a Women's History Month. Um, we currently like, just wrapped up um, our Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And it's been harder now that we're not um, in person where students can come and like lead discussions um, 
educate their peers on things about their culture and heritage that are really important to them. Um, but lately, students have still taken up that mantle and we've been sent email blasts several times a week um, highlighting important Asian American Pacific Islander um, kind of heroes, uh, whether they're authors, um, athletes, um, you know, movie stars, all of that stuff. And so I think that that's been really important, especially, you know, as Jenna mentioned this in these past couple of weeks with all the news that's been coming out, I think Riverdale does a good job of not shying away from those um, hard discussions, but bringing our community into the fold and helping us educate one another um, on these things that are really, really important. Um, school isn't just for the grades you get, but for what it's going to be, you know, once you leave our community. Great. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of an overview. We also want to open it up to questions. And I see that some of you have started putting questions in the chat and that's great. Feel free to continue to do those. Um, I can start to answer some of those and I'll, I'll send them around to different members of the team to answer as well. Um, the first one is about um, financial aid and um, financial aid becoming available for kids who are entering in, in high school. Um, I'm happy to speak to that. Sheila Hicks Rotella may have, uh, you may have attended her session earlier. She's our director of financial aid. Um, but uh, basically, you know, we are a school that um, at all of our major entry points, which for us are pre-K, kindergarten, sixth grade, seventh grade, and ninth grade, um, we do um, have financial aid available in those grades. Um, so, you know, we're unfortunately not at a point yet where we're totally need blind. There are, I think, very few independent schools in the area that are, um, but we try to be need aware and uh, we try to, if we're going to admit somebody, um, ensure that they um, receive the financial aid that they qualify for. Um, but please know that we do open up financial aid um, in sixth grade and in ninth grade. Um, I'm gonna um, shift to Tracy in a second, but I see there's also a question about um, the ERB being required for kindergarten and sixth grade admissions given the era of social distancing. Um, let me just quickly speak to testing. Um, so uh, the ERB um, basically is, is sort of the um, organization that puts out some of the testing that we do um, require. Uh, we have for the last few years required the ABLE testing for kindergarten admission. Um, that test is actually no longer going to be offered after uh, the end of June. Um, so uh, that is not going to be a requirement for kindergarten admission anymore. Um, we are looking at several assessment options um, that will be a replacement for that, but we have not yet decided on anything. Um, for students entering grades 5 through 12, um, we will require either the IM SEE or the SSAT. Um, both of those assessments are um, currently working on at-home versions in case we're not able to get back to um, in-person testing in the fall. Um, I have also received a couple of emails from both testing organizations that um, they will be um, offering testing at sort of one-off sites, not maybe the large group setting that they've offered in the past. Um, so I would say definitely stay tuned to our website for information about that. And I'm sure that Gina and Rise will send out information about that as it becomes available in the fall. Um, obviously COVID is, is sort of wreaking havoc on our admission process, um, but I'm gonna try to shift that into something, um, some of, uh, somewhat of an opportunity um, and say that it's giving us a good chance to really assess what it is that we really are looking for um, and um, at all levels. And so we're going to do our best to build a process. I can assure you that we will get to know you and your kids um, in many different ways through this process. Um, I see the interview, yes. Um, you know, If we have to do virtual interviews, we will do that. Um, we've not made any final decisions on any of this yet, but I can assure you that we will communicate with you um, throughout the summer as we make decisions around all all of that. Um, we, we don't feel that there should be one way to get to know a child or a family. We want to get to know you in multiple ways. Um, Tracy, do you want to take this question on how inclusive is your community for kids needing services for academic support? 
Yeah, no problem. Certainly. So I think, you know, one piece you should know uh, regarding admission in general, it's not just Riverdale, but, um, you know, if there are um, accommodations that your child has, that's something that we, we can't ask for um, in the admission process. And it's something that no, no one really, unless you're applying to a school that, um, you know, is serving students who have specific needs, should be asking you. General independent schools shouldn't be asking you for things, um, whether that's an evaluation or something like that. So in general, everyone will submit the same material for an admission. Um, if you're looking at grades six through 12, um, yes, the interview, but things like transcripts, yes, the testing, um, we're gonna ask for uh, recommendations. There's a, a whole host of things that allow us to assess the student's ability, um, not just their community fit, but their academic fit for, for the institution. Um, I would say that Riverdale is a rigorous academic program. We talk a lot about the idea of high challenge and high support though. We do wanna be an inclusive community where a lot of different learners can be successful. We talk a lot about neurodiversity um, and having lots and lots of different kids in our community with different academic strengths is something that we really want. Um, you know, I think that it depends a little bit on what some what your child is struggling with, who they might work with. I know that some of my colleagues have mentioned, um, you know, the support of an individual teacher. So maybe if it's something that your child is struggling with in a particular class, they might want to meet one on one with their teacher. Um, if it's something that they're struggling with, maybe organizationally, um, it's not an academic subject. We have a really wonderful learning research team who can help students tackle different challenges that may be um, coming up for them, like maybe they need to work on becoming a, a better note taker, and that's going to help them across all the disciplines, and it's not necessarily something that they need to meet with one-on-one -on -one with the teacher. Um, but I think there is quite a bit of support in the community, kind of paired with the challenge. Uh, we really do set some kind of lofty academic goals for our students, um, because they're really, really motivated and bright bright kids, and we really want to challenge them. But it is a place that I think offers a lot of opportunity for, um, you know, engaging engagement with teachers and students together, and we have um, older students who mentor younger students. So there's definitely a, a vibe of inclusivity with regard to different types of learners and different strengths and making sure that everybody's successful. Thank you. Maybe if, if Tim's there, if he wants to pop in and, and answer a little bit about interviews um, at the lower school and um, you know, just generally speaking, if, if you haven't noticed, if we're not entertaining you with all of our talk about Riverdale, um, we have definitely the cutest babies that you'll be seeing today. So hopefully you're getting a chance to enjoy seeing, seeing the, the many babies that are part of our admission team. Uh, Tim, um, just maybe you could just talk a little bit about our interview process for the lower school, what that looks like, um, and, and generally speaking, what we're assessing and looking for in in kindergarten admission. Sure, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the sort of easiest way to get into that is to explain a bit about what we did this past season, um, this current year, uh, as, as a sort of, um, you know, guide for what we will we will do moving forward, depending on what we're able to do. So um, this past season, our interview process included uh, about a 25 minute one on one interview. Um, and that was uh, followed by a, a small group interview. So it was uh, four students at a time sort of simulated classroom experience. Um, after that, we spent we left some time to sit with uh, the adults, and so the idea would be that your visit to campus um, left a bunch of different kind of um, meetings with our team, and so you'd have we would have the opportunity to meet your child, make your child feel really comfortable, as comfortable as possible. Um, we do some work, we ask some questions, and then we have the group portion, which I think at that point is is very comfortable uh, for students as well. Um, it's going to be things they're they're familiar with from school, um, and by the end, we feel we we have a pretty good uh, rapport with the students and and hopefully they've had a positive visit and then it's nice to sit down as adults and uh, talk a bit about the school see if uh, if your family has any questions and um, and we, we try to give some feedback at that time as well just on how it went and let you know we got to know your child um, I think moving forward Jenna mentioned it um, whatever next year looks like and whatever we're able to do uh, getting to know your family is, is non-negotiable and um, trying to find the most age appropriate developmentally appropriate way to uh, get to know your, your children is also non-negotiable for us. So whatever we, we do ask, um, uh, you know, our, our goal is not to set up obstacles or, or put um, children through unnecessary um, tasks in order to complete an application. Um, for us, it's really important that we see them in, in the, the most sort of comfortable environment possible and, uh, and, and give them some time to, to get to know us as well. And then uh, obviously we're, we're going to work pretty hard to get to know your family as well. Um, you know, the rest of the application has in the past, it's included um, some form of third party assessment. We'll see what we do this year. Jenna mentioned it. We're, we're still 
um, in some discussions about that. Again, we're not going to do that just to do it. We're going to make sure that it it uh, it really is a, an intentional piece of our process. And the final piece is uh, you know getting information from the educators who spend who spend the days with with the students, and um, and, and that's really valuable for us as well. I think uh, you know teachers have some really good insights to offer, and obviously. Uh, at the end of this, we're looking to see what, what students' uh, school life is like. And so we, we'll try to uh, put those three pieces together or, or two pieces together and, um, and have a com as complete a profile as possible. Um, and, and more than anything, it's a real joy for us. I mean, we really do enjoy the process of, uh, of meeting everyone. I think um, as much as I, I love working with adults, I, I wouldn't be in this job if I didn't enjoy uh, the student part of it as well. And, and that's the same for all of our team. I think one, one of the things that's coming across, which is what I shared in, in my earlier session, I really think um, all of us at the school approach um, the admission process as a way to open doors to the school for you and your family. We're looking for reasons to admit you and your child to the school. We're not sitting there thinking about how we can sort of put up those roadblocks or, or not invite you in. I think we're really thinking about um, how can we you know, help you understand the values of the school, understand um, your child, and how can we work together um, to make a match that, that will serve everybody uh, well, both on your side and ours. Um, are there other questions um, that, that you'd like to um, ask us this afternoon? Are there other things that we can talk about, whether it's the process or any details about the school? All right, I don't see any um, questions coming in. Um, Chaz, is it possible to make me a co-host for a minute so I could share my screen? Is that something that you're able to do? Uh, yeah, I do believe so. Okay, great. Um, I, do, I do see, while you're doing that, I do see a question in there, how will we handle school visits? And I'm assuming you mean for kindergarten maybe? Um, if you could just, okay. Like, I think you mean, I'm not sure if you, okay. Um, I, I, uh, I think you probably mean coming to us um, and interviewing for the process and what will that look like. Um, again, I think that's probably going to be um, an online experience for, for all grade levels in terms of us, um, you know, going to visit schools. Uh, you know, we, we'd love to do that, but I think that might be an interesting challenge this coming fall, depending on all the Things. I can imagine that if schools are opening, they're not going to be so excited to have us uh, visiting um, in person. So I think that's something that we'll sort of play by ear. Um, but again, that's, as Tim just said, that's why we have so many different um, things set up to be able to get to know your kids. We want to not just um, sort of take one person's word for it or, or see how they are in interacting with us. We want to have the multiple ways for, for us to assess them. And um, so we haven't made any final um, decisions. Um, one of the things I feel really lucky about is having the big, you're not even meeting our whole team, um, having the big team that we have, um, we're, we're able to really get to know um, individual students and families and um, we don't feel like we have to uh, shift the process that much um, as a result of you know what might become an online thing um, how will we do with recommendations from teachers if students are not in session and how will we interpret the seventh grade transcript um, again i think um, we will do our very best we know that it's going to look different from what it's been in the past but um, uh, you know, we, that's the case for pretty much everyone in our applicant pool. Um, so we're going to have to be flexible and that's going to be okay. Um, you know, if, if teacher recommendations, I think, um, you know, if we have to expand who we get recommendations from and we have to include um, some of this year's teachers as a way to get to know kids better, we'll do that. Um, I think, you know, it'll, it's not, um, going to change um, as a result of, of COVID. We're gonna try to get as much information as we possibly can. So I'm gonna try to quickly, um, you know, before we uh, wrap up here, I'm gonna just quickly show you guys a couple of, of photos of our, our, our campus. I hope that'll work. Um, I'll can I just jump in really quickly before yes, you do that? You go ahead, uh-huh. I'm trying to think of like a way to, um, to help advise families, you know, without giving them 
uh, kind of concrete information. And I, I think this would apply to, to, um, to all grade, grade, grade levels you might be applying to, but certainly for the kindergarten process or the pre-kindergarten process, um, I, I think, uh, you know, consider this an invitation to reach out and really advocate for your own family. I think we always welcome that. Um, you know, I think there's a line, there's obviously a fine line in the admission world between like, you know, overdoing it and, and, and advocating properly. And I, I think um, we'd, be, we'd even be happy to talk about what I think um, it looks like when you are communicating with us in a way that's meaningful. But if you have a story to share with us, please share it. If you ever want to speak with one of us, please email. Um, and I think more than ever in the, in the upcoming year, that's going to be something that um, we kind of hope families take advantage of. Uh, we, we have, I mean, I can't speak for every admission office, but we're very willing to communicate with you and, and, um, and help you out and guide you through this process. And, and we hope that that will be helpful. Absolutely. I, th I think that's um, a, a huge part of, of who we are. Um, and, and if there's something that you feel you should write about your child to communicate to us, that's fine too. Um, our, our interviews always involve that conversation that will allow you to do that. Um, while I'm showing just some pictures, just to give you a little bit of a feel for the school um, while we're wrapping up here. Um, I don't know, Tim, do you want to monitor the chat and see if there are any other questions coming through since I have, I'm sharing my screen and can't see that? Yes, I will do that. Sorry, okay. I forgot that was muted. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Yeah, I don't see any questions coming in yet. I, I do hope what's coming across is, um, you know, that all of us care about children and care about getting to know them. And, and hopefully some of what you're seeing um, in these pictures is, um, you know, just the, the close connections that our teachers have with um, their students, uh, that the students have with one another. Um, we're fortunate at Riverdale, um, people often ask us about the, the oh, there's our, our Alvin Ailey residency, which is a special, um, experience that we have at our lower school every January for a couple of weeks. So you're getting to see some shots there. Uh, we do really feel lucky to have the use of the campus and the space. This is one of our music classes here. Uh, so you're getting a, a quick look at, um, you know, kids, kids doing real work. Um, and I think that um, it gives a, a good sense of things. Here are some kids climbing a tree. That's all part of the experience at Riverdale. Tim, I think I saw something else come in the chat. Do you want to mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that is. Uh, the question actually, I, I think the, the pictures is a perfect way to actually end here because unfortunately we, we are um, out of time. I'm, okay. I feel terrible, terrible, terrible. Um, I feel terrible. We, but we do, we are on a, on a tight schedule and we do want to like um, get, you know, our, our break and then move into our second school fair session but this was really 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 awesome and thank you guys so much for coming thank you you can all ask us questions anytime email us admission at riverdale.edu or you can ask chaz and he'll tell you all the great stories about being a student at our school so thank you all for coming thank you chaz for moderating and uh have a great rest of your day thank you thank you thank you Chaz, do we stay with you or we go out and come back in? Yeah, so I think I think I actually made you the host. Oh, okay, so I should end. Okay. For everyone, and then you guys just go to the next one, and then I'll let you guys all in right now. Okay, great. Thank you. Awesome.